I just have to film this video because Snapchat's pissing me off because I can't record long periods of time. But anyways, a lot of people like when they do the arm wave, they think they're like, they do this kind of thing and they're moving way too much of their actual body. Um, when you think of your arm, you have your <coughs> elbow. Wow, I just pointed to my wrist and said elbow. You have your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder. Those are the only things that move. You, if you're creating the illusion of a wave going through your arm, so it's important to, at first, start at a 90 degree angle. So the very foundation and what they used to do, and some people still do this, but this is how you learn. You go straight down, and so everything is 90, 90, 90. And then this is the tricky part. So when you come here, your hand's gonna go flat again, but your elbow's gonna point towards the ceiling. And now you see there's this box here, there's a box inverted out here, and there's a box on the inside. And then from there, this, uh, um, your wrist is an anchor point as much as it can be. And then your, sh your shoulder shrugs up with your, with your uh, wrist in the same location. So it's, you don't have a lot of movement there. It's difficult, but that's all it is. So you go one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. And then you have to do it in the opposite direction going out. So you shrug one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three. So I would do this for hours in my bedroom, but at first, what you have to do is you have to do something like this. And this is what I spent a lot of time doing. So because of this, this weird motion where you come one and then this, it's very strange, but your tricep is looking up your biceps looking down, which is weird to come from. The lighting's weird, but my elbow's pointing down and the inside of my elbow is pointing up right now, right? But then when you come here, it inverts. And that 90 degree angle, and I'll try to do this quick. This 90 degree angle here and this 90 degree angle here eventually is what creates pop or uh, tutting. So tutting is the, another aspect of popping that comes out of this dance style. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so I don't know if I have enough room, but that's what you learn. Oh, what I was gonna say was because of how that, that elbow goes from here to there and that's a very uh, unnatural uh, it's not something you do so it's very unnatural so to get the uh, muscle memory of having your elbow point down to now your elbows up down up down up while keeping your wrist totally still so the way I would try to teach people to do this is I would I would hold their wrists and then your shoulder pivots and your wrist should stay as still as possible. But it's this, because you, if you're creating the illusion of a wave coming through you, if you start with the hand wave and this is the first part of it, this has to be isolated when you do this. So when you come from here to here, in order to transfer the energy from this part of the wave into your elbow, the illusion is lost if you don't keep that wrist in the same place, right? So when you do that, it looks like it's transferring through your arm. Um, but the way I practice that is I would get up against a wall and I would just rotate 
my shoulder and that will develop muscle memory so that you can then learn how to do that. And I would do it on both arms in the mirror in my room and I would just practice going in and out because you have to be able to go in and out both directions if you want to do the arm wave both ways. So I don't even have enough room. What this will look like together, you, can't, you still can't see all my arms. What it would look like together is like this. So one, two, three. And this is very like choppy. This is kind of how this is kind of how it started. Okay, but then you start to um, you start you start to you, you start to evolve this, and you make it a little bit more a little bit more fluid. Okay, so instead of having this drastic, uh, this drastic 90 right here, uh, which is hard to transition into here, right? Instead of doing that, you're going to make every, there's the, you're going to make each segment a little bit more fluid. So you're one, two, three. So instead of just dropping your hand, now we're going to do this instead. Okay, so you end up at the same place, but you give it a nice wave. Wave with your hand. So that's how you start out for more of a fluid wave. Once you've mastered this, right, then you're going to, then you're going to start making more fluid. So one, and then instead of doing this, instead of this motion, all you're going to do is when you start your wave, your elbows pointing up. So you roll your wrist and then you pop. I said that backwards. Roll your wrist, your elbows pointing up and then it comes down. So this motion is replaced by this simple simple uh your your shoulder is actually rolling over but it's important to keep this in the same same position so it's kind of hard to see from here i don't know if you can see it from this angle maybe but you do the wave here and then all you're doing is rolling that shoulder and that gives the illusion of the transfer of en energy from here. And then when you get to your shoulder, you can kind of do like, you can kind of roll into your chest if you wanted. And then you can start, anyway, so th this is what an arm wave that's more fluid would look like. I wish you could see all of me if I turn sideways. It's going to look more like this. And all of that you're doing with the rhythm of whatever song you're doing. Um, so if it's a slow song, you might, you might want a, a really slow wave. Right? And then you kind of do this whole uh, liquid, I don't know what this is called. It's just, well, actually this is sort of like a snake. Um, and then you can start to play with things like, <clears throat> I don't, actually, I don't think there's a name for this specifically, but there are different ways you can manipulate the arm wave. So instead of, like if you're standing here, like you don't always just have to go, woo, but you can do it as fast or as slow as you want. So depending on the music, you might want to do 
a really dramatic wave. Or maybe there's a, a, a part in the song where it's a drum line and it goes so you can go um, so that's how you start to play like once you get the foundation of all these different moves you kind of have them in your wheelhouse and then you can just pick at them at will and that's how you freestyle um, and so anyways but so there's different ways to start to accentuate your um, your waves so tracing is one so tracing would just be say my arms here and I want to trace my wave out so I'm gonna point with my finger and I'm gonna start here and then here and then I'm gonna roll so I'm kind of like highlighting that wave I'm coming out this way with it and now if I want to come back I just trace it and then I can switch and I typically start to do a um, a liquid style and this is kind of the basis of liquid um, is this movement right here it takes a long time to get used to uh, you can get a sock or a towel and do something like this can help you just have hold it like this so your fingers are locked like this and you can start to figure out where your hands can go with your hands interlocked like this um, so that's a, a technique on how to and this is a really good one come up come down, flip your hands, come up to the other side, come down, and then you start to get more fluid, more fluid, throw that away, you can hold your hands together, and do this, and what that translates to if you start to separate your hands, now all of a sudden you have this you have this thing that's starting to look a little bit more fluid. Right? And then, so you kind of have this orb that you're, it's like a ball of energy and you're playing with it. Now, you take what you learned from this, only you're doing the, the hand wave. Now you start to play with it here. Right, and you can get bigger with it, and you can stop. This takes a while to learn, but you have to learn to curl your fingers like this. So if you want to follow that wave, and then you can start, if you want a specific line you want to trace, you can do that. Now, doing this, right? Remember this. The thing with the towel. Your fingers are locked. You can't go anywhere where your fingers aren't locked. So you're kind of limited to this movement. Right? There's not a whole lot of ways you can move with your fingers interlocked. But if you're playing with this liquid, you can do it upside down and you can bring it up here and then you can bring it back around. And then this is where this comes in. So you got your orb ball and you're just kind of bouncing it back and forth, doing this motion, right? Now, it's like you're throwing something away. You're throwing it away. You don't want this thing anymore, right? You're gonna turn this way. You don't want this thing anymore. So that motion 
in combination with practicing this, which takes a long, long time, and doing this, and you have to get, uh, you have to get precise or the illusion is lost. And you can do these little ones. You can do, like I said, go behind your neck. But if you want to change direction and you want to start doing the liquid, that's where this comes in. So now all of a sudden your fingers are following each other still, right? So your fingers are following each other. Let's see if you can get a closer look at that. See, no, I'm talking about. So the fingers are following each other as, right? As you scoop, your fingers are following each other everywhere. And that's where that wrist motion, this comes into play. So then you can start doing, you can start moving this wherever you want. And you can just start playing with this. And it, you know, can give you this really cool And it's really fun. So anyways, and then you can sort of take that ball, take that orb, wrap it around, extend it, and then into an arm wave. Here's another one. I, I The way I always in, imagine it in my head is like, you've got that ball of energy, right? So you're, you're playing with this liquid style, right? And then if you want to go into a wave, you can do something with that orb right here. You know, you're playing with this orb, wrap it around, you're still holding it, wrap it around your head. And then you got this ball of energy and you can push it out. You can, you can use it to harness this wave. So you're, and then go back into the, right? So, so you have tracing, arm tracing, you have, you can't really see my whole body, but you can trace your arm and then you can trace your body wave. You can, you can't really see my feet, but you can you start to like make it fancy, right? So you can do like a body roll where it looks like you're spinning something down your body. So you can do like a, start from the shoulders and do like a spin. So the transfers from your, your chest and then you have to sit. This is a strange motion for most people, but it's like your pelvic is facing forward and then you just keep your chest where it is and it's kind of like you're humping the air and then you sit down. And then from there, then you start to manipulate your legs. You roll it back, you roll your hips back into that pelvic thrust that then comes to your chest and shoulders and then back into your arms. So that's the basic uh, body roll. So if you're, tracing your arm and you're coming doing a little of this you got your ball you're pushing that ball all over the place and then you want to bring that ball into a body wave bring it into your chest here's another thing you can you can you can do something like this where you're tracing around your head tracing down your chest but then you can also manipulate and like, like your hand is controlling, you know, your leg where the wave is going through your leg. So you can roll down here and then you can isolate and roll each leg, right? And eventually you can, you can do this several times and then come back 
up through your hips, that seated position, back up. So you're kind of doing this. And it very much is a shoulders coming back, seated, up when you want to return. And then, anyways, I totally got off track, but that's kind of the, the very foundational ways that I started learning. Um, obviously I was not, it took me years to be able to do that, but I would do things like this and practice just rotating my arm so that I could quickly come in and out. So, um, and then what I was going to say before was the origin of the arm wave. You can see how this evolved into tutting. So tutting is the art of making boxes, basically making boxes out of the air. So how it started was people were, I should have put it in a wide, wide, wide angle. Um, people started doing the arm wave, right? So I'm sure this, I have no idea. I'm just guessing, but your basic arm wave is the foundation of all tuts. So if you're doing the arm wave from the outside in on both arms, you would do down. You can't see my hands, but they're down like this and this, and then you come into this, right? So here, what do you have? You have two boxes, one here, one here, and then you have the inverted box on the outside. So you got two boxes. Now, flip one up, keep that shoulder isolated, flip one up. Now look, now we have king tut, which is why it's called tutting. So from there, you're isolated, you can pop. People will often, right? I'm not that great of a popper. I'm just gonna let you know that right now because it's not something I've really practiced. Um, but waving, tutting, dime stopping, all of those things are techniques within the popping the popping dance style. <clears throat> I just never specifically focused on popping. Um, popping is like very structured and it's like like when people pop they're like um, but I like the more uh, softer um, side of popping I have to finish tutting, so I was going to get going to the, the robot, which is the robot comes from popping. So tutting, so your basic arm wave, right? You get this, and then there's your king tut, and from there people started getting more creative, and they would start flipping their hands, and they would flip this, and they would, right? And they would do certain things like this. And then they would, might, they, then maybe they would, maybe they would do an arm wave and a body roll in, in your tut, right? And then they would flip how they're standing, all this kind of stuff. I don't know what I'm doing there, but yeah. You can do all sorts of things from just that position. Those are basic, basic, basic boxes. Now from there, here's some more cubes. So where can you go from here? Over your head, there's another cube 
right there. Invert it. There's a bigger cube. You can invert that. Same thing upside down. There's a, there's a cube. Flip your hands back. Same thing as we had up here. Right? There's the biggest cube. Smaller cube. Another cube. Do the same thing over here. Flip it up. Big cube. Outside cube. Rotate. Inside cube. And you can see how all of this spawns from this, which is your arm wave. So I imagine that's how the evolution of this happened. Um, because it's a pretty direct line that you can see. Um, so after you do your all the basic tuts, now there's also this angle here, right? If there's one, two, you know, main angles, well, you can start to go 3D. Instead of just a, a 2D, I'm giving you a visual box, 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 box. I'm giving you all these boxes in a two-dimensional sense. Then people started going, wait a second, I can come to this angle, right? And if I go to this angle, now all of a sudden, there's more dimensions that we're talking about and looking at it, it's more interesting. Let's flip this down. Oh, that's interesting. Another box, another box. This is the, the, the Goldilocks of tutting. Well, maybe aside from these angles, this is called the prayer position. All tutting, 99% of tutting starts from here because this is the center of all of your boxes. Okay. So box, 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 box. And they're not just boxes because they're geometric shapes that you make with your hands that all have right angles. Okay. So prayer position, people typically go choo, 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 or right? Okay. So you can see the, you can see the geometry there. Well, then you can go here and here. This is your prayer position. So Oh look, there's a box. Can you do the same thing upside down? Yep, there's boxes. Now what if you start flipping it and messing around with stuff like that? Okay, what if what if I trace with my tuts? So now I'm tracing, right? What if I go past? Oh, there's another box. Box box, huh, back, box, box, that's a harder one, but you see, and the better you are at keeping your hands straight, the better your boxes are, let's come up here, now we have this shape, what else can we do with tuts, we can fold them, I'm going to fold this in on itself, like there's a hinge point at my fingertips. Fold that down. Maybe I want to trace down here. So I'm here, fold that down. Now I can have fun like that. Um, I can, this is a fun one. If you're here, right, it's kind of an inverted prayer position. You can at the fingertips and then you're back to prayer position or come into here. This is a fun one. This is like Jacob's ladder. So you can trace up. You're here. Trace up. You hit it. And this is like a chain reaction. Right? 
come up with it too. You can walk it up. Now, what if I want to do the 3D thing? So I'm looking at boxes here. What if I want to do boxes this way? So now what if I want to bring my hand out this way and then I trace out this way and I start messing with that, All right? So from the front, from the front, it looks like, and you can start tracing like that. Box, trace, box, box, slide, box, slide, box, 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 trace, and you can, oh no, 10% battery. Then you can, if you find yourself, like sometimes I'll get, I, don't, I can never do it on purpose. Oh, uh, that's, a, that's a cool trace. I mean, that's like a pretty uh, typical one. See? So you can go from this type of box and then all of a sudden, now you're three dimensionals. Because your box was here, but now, now you've got another dimension to it. And it starts to get real interesting and you connect and you come over here and you slide and you hinge and then you can even like let's say you want to like bounce this one off pivot hinge point hinge point hinge point hinge 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 box box but if you get yourself down here, this is one of the ma main ones, right? Here, 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 here. Well, let's say you get here. Well, you can kick one up with your knee. Huh? Kick this one up. Back to prayer position. Start messing with these boxes. And then you can wave out of it, move your ball around, do an arm wave, start doing some liquid if you want, do a little head roll, head isolation. Oh, uh, and then you have, holy crap, 32 minutes, I need to stop and go to bed. Uh, hey, I'm enjoying myself. I feel like I'm reminiscing. Um, so... The robot. The robot comes from popping. So I'm sure you've heard the term popping and locking. Popping and locking. Um, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate any locking for you, but locking, one of the main moves is like this thing where they'll, they'll, I'm going to look so stupid. They do something where they're like, And they, and they lock. Locking just means you're locking your body in position. Um, but they do a lot of stuff where they're like, and they'll do like, they'll do like claps under their hand, under the legs. It's a very um, fun dance, uh, dance style. And you can see a lot of the, they do a lot of, uh, Wrist rolls, I mean, lockers are awesome. I'm not a locker, I've never practiced locking. I've seen a lot of what they do. Um, it's a very cool dance style, um, but I, I can't do it, never practice it. Um, but popping and locking, the reason why those two words are said that way is because they're kind of, uh, one, they're not one and the same, but they come from the same place. Um, now, the robot is a series of dime stops and isolations. Um, 
A dime stop is exactly what it sounds like. You're stopping on a dime. And when you do it um, with the degree of accuracy and intention, you will get the effect of the robot. So a lot of people, they do the robot and they, they do this thing. That's actually in isolation. So a lot of people like jokingly do it at weddings, but like that legitimately is an isolation. So your elbow is the isolation point and nothing else is moving, but your arm isolated at that elbow. So other isolation points, typically in the robot, your back is stiff. Um, your arms are just, I don't need to explain it, are less, less human and more robotic. Um, but it doesn't have to be. So like, you don't have to be like, oh, I am a real bad. You can j just, what I like to do and what I used to do was like, if I was going to get something from the fridge, I'd get up from my chair and I would... I would uh, slow-mo all the way to the fridge in this sort of um, overdramatic style of walking that's uh, a little bit more uh, like you're on the moon in slow motion. I don't know how to dis else to describe it. And I really enjoy, I used to really enjoy doing this kind of stuff. But, so, dime stopping the way I used to practice it and just the way I used to dance, just because I thought it was fun. I would pick a song that was like very melodic and slow, that would have like a slower tempo, so I could just dime stop. It, you don't have to be doing anything like a robot. You can just kind of like a model. Anyways, so the, yeah, you just look silly. Um, but yeah, I guess just envision like a model, you know, striking poses or whatever. You can literally move and dime stop in whatever position you want. To me, I think it looks really cool, especially done with music, especially if you emote and uh, captivate what that music is, as long as you're conveying what that music is saying through your body, I think it will look cool. If you're not feeling it, that's going to translate as well. It's going to be obvious that you're not feeling it, but just sort of pick some, just go from movement to movement. Anyways, um, 
So that's dime stopping. And really that's, popping is just a, a harder hit. Instead of dime stopping, you'd be like, I'm not, I'm not really a, a popper, like a traditional popper, but that's really the main difference piece, uh, between, you know, the dime stopping that I do or what I was just demonstrating and popping. I mean, popping, they have like, um, they have the head roll which I've never practiced that. That's not something I do in my dances. Um, but that's a everybody knows that there's the one where they I, I can't it's not something I've ever practiced but you know, they keep, their head keeps going lower and lower and, they sh and then they come back up with it. It's really cool. It's incredibly impressive. It takes a lot of skill. Uh, I've never, just besides, like just besides that basic thing, but it's, again, it's not, not something that I personally enjoy doing, but it does look very cool, if, especially for the people that are good at it. Um, so you got dime stopping, uh, and from dime stopping you get the robot. And you can do dime stopping mixed in with uh, a liquid dance. Um, and you can start to um, weave all these things together and just, now you have a bin full of stuff and you can just be like, oh, I'm gonna dime stop right now. Maybe I'm gonna, f I feel a little bit more liquidy. And then I'm gonna dime stop again. Maybe I'm going to slow everything down to match the tempo of the music and then come back into a normal speed. All of that stuff you can do and play with if you, um, if you just get some basic things down, like the arm wave, um, and practice it and practice it. And I haven't danced in, I mean, I dance like periodically, like every three or four months I'll, I'll dance. But when I, the first like five years of my dancing, it was like every day, several hours a day. Um, but you know, I grew up and I had a job work 60 hours a week and that's that. Um, and yes, I gained weight and lost hair. So that's what happens when you get older, <clears throat> but I still like dancing. That's some of the, uh, fundamentals, some of the, uh, origins of popping. So again, with popping, you have, um, you have boogaloo and then you have popping. And within popping, you have arm waves, body rolls. Um, to be honest, I'm not even sure if liquid is considered popping. I want to say it is. I think it originated in a, a different area, but I think they're definitely, um, I don't know. I think they're the same, the, under the same umbrella because you, Anyways, I utilize, a lot of people that do liquid do a lot of really, well, liquid e moves that involve body rolls, that involve the robot and dime stopping. So I would say liquid is probably under the umbrella of popping. 
or at, at the very least influenced by it, if not directly. Um, it could have been people spawned off from, I don't know the exact history of it, but I'm just going to say for right now with popping, you have, um, liquid, you have tutting, you have the actual hitting of the popping, you have the locking again, which I don't do, I don't know. YouTube locking dance. Um, you have the locking part, and then you have the technique of dime stopping, um, hitting and dime stopping. Uh, so yeah, arm waves, hitting, dime stopping, liquids, arm waves, body rolls, body waves. Yeah, and then there's a lot of stuff within the liquid that people do that gets a lot more crazy um then there's finger tutting which i'm not great at early on i learned a few patterns you know but it's been a long time uh it's been a long time how did i do that i forget how it ended it was really cool i don't finger tut that's not my thing i did it for a little bit I can throw a couple of these, you know, just for show, but I'm not really a finger tutter. So anyways, there you have it. I just made a 47 minute video and it was supposed to be like three minutes. So I guess I was enjoying myself. Take care. Stay safe.